Yo, let's break Steph Curry's jump shot down and Ray Allen's jump shot into two parts. Um, we normally think of Steph Curry as being a one-motion shooter because it's so fluid, but the reason that we think of him as one motion is because he has such a smooth transition between two distinct phases of the jump shot. So um, we're going to break this down with a few diagrams. So um, to start off, we could really break down Steph's shot into like 10 parts. It just depends on how deep we want to analyze it, as there's lots of tiny little movements that we can look at and say this is another part, this is another part. And what makes it one motion is just how fluid it is. And really what makes it one motion is having a constant velocity up into release where the ball just keeps rising, which Steph is good at. But ideally we have a constant acceleration so the ball doesn't just keep rising, it rises faster and faster up to the point of max velocity release. So. Um, let's take a look at the two parts to this jump shot, breaking it down. Um, the first one, we think of the, uh, by the way, th this is a left-handed shot. I just mirrored it left to right, so it, it reads left to right. But um, it starts off with Steph's offhand as being more or less on the side or underneath the ball and the shooting hand on top of the ball. And the offhand drives from dip to shoulder. We can also think of the dip to shoulder motion as being a hang clean or a clean for the lift, Olympic lifters. And then we can think of the second motion as being from shoulder to release or overhead press, overhead jerk. So um, in the first motion, the offhand is the dominant for acceleration up. And the second motion, when the shooting hand gets underneath the ball, the shooting hand is the dominant acceleration for both. So um, well, we think of, say, someone like Chandler Parsons as being two motion as he stops the ball, bring it way behind his head, and releases. He's really using the same two motions. It's just a matter of having a smooth transition between these two motions um, up to the point of release. So let's make it even simpler by taking a look at how Ray Allen does it and comparing him to a straight-up Olympic lifter. So get into a little bit of physics here. Um, if you don't know what the clean and jerk is, um, we'll explain it a little bit, but it's something that you should know. So, uh, Olympic lift is you're just trying to get a heavy weight over your head from either the ground or uh, your dip area, which is called a hang clean. So we can think of these two motions as being similar as both of these start as uh, applying force into the ground from the legs. Newton's third law for each action there's an equal and opposite reaction so if we push down on the ground the ground pushes into us newton's second law um, acceleration uh, is caused by force where whichever object has less mass is accelerated upwards we have less mass than the ground so when we apply force into the ground the ground moves us up into the air now we can transfer this acceleration force into the weight or the object and how fast that acceleration, uh, acceleration of the object moves depends on how uh, that object's mass compares to ours. So, for instance, if a ball weighs way less than us, as much less mass, then it'll go flying. But if the mass is heavier than us, then it may push us down into the ground. Um, so we can think of Ray Allen's jump shot as being hang clean to shoulders, this phase here, and the second motion being shoulders to release or the jerk phase um, so that's basically how we can break it down into two motions so we can isolate these two motions and work on them to improve them specifically a good way to do it is through the, the olympic clean and jerk um, i think that this is a good thing to learn for all athletes um, the principles in this really help in a lot of different movements dunking for instance but we can see how it translates into shooting as our efficiency at moving a heavy weight over our head. Um, if we're able to do that well, then we can move a ball over our head and out pretty easily. So I um, hope this helps you understand the shooting motion. And my recommendation is um, investigating the clean and jerk a little bit and trying it out. And you might find that this really enhances your ability to shoot with arc and range arc and range being two major components of shooting. So think about it. Hang clean, dip to shoulder, overhead jerk,
shorter release. So hope this helps. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, again, we can think of Steph or Ray being one motion because of how fluid they are, but we could break it down even to more motions. Motion one being dip to overhead, but motion zero could be catch to gather, sorry, catch to dip or gather to dip. And then we can look at that catch to dip or gather to dip and look at how um, there's a finger pivot involved in lining the ball up. So we can really break things down into as many parts as we want to hyperanalyze, but I think it helps to just cut the motion in half and look at these two distinct parts and um, go from there. So I think this stuff's pretty cool. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, as always, check us out on Instagram. If, you, if you're not on here, you're missing out on a lot of exclusive content. And if you're waiting on the energy efficient, sorry, the efficient shooting resource free ebook, I'm still working on that. Hopefully get that out before April or by the start of April. Um, if you want to be on the early, early release, email energyefficientbasketball at gmail.com. That's it. Peace, love. See you all in the comments.